Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Whether you're here in person or anywhere else on our campus or joining us at home, we are so glad that you chose to make worship with us a part of your day on the first Sunday of Lent. Welcome. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruits of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time Say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying 
display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruits of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and to your house. Hear with the Spirit the saying to God's people. Psalm on page six will be respect will be read responsibly by verse. <coughs> Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They shall say to God, You are my refuge and my stronghold, our God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made God your refuge. And the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall carry you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because you are bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver you. I will protect you because you know my name. You will call upon me and I will answer you. I am with you in trouble. I will rescue you and bring you honor.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. May God's, words, may God's word only be spoken. May God's word only be heard. Please be seated. We have important work to do today because this is one of the most important passages in all of the scriptures. Jesus, having just been baptized, <coughs> Jesus, who is in the River Jordan when the heavens open up, and the voice of God says, this is my beloved, my son. Listen to him. In him I am well pleased. If you and I were the recipients of that kind of honorific, we'd be talking about where the party was going to be held. Who were we inviting? Weeks together at the beach, invite all the friends. God has spoken and given this moniker to Jesus of Nazareth. But our God is often mysterious, and the next thing that happens isn't two weeks at the beach. The same spirit that makes that possible, that enters Jesus at his baptism, that speaks from the heavens in the voice of the Father, that same spirit sends him out to the desert. And the desert was considered by every good Jew the place where you don't go because nothing good happens out there. It's where the scapegoat, the goat, that where all of the sins of the community were placed on the goat, the goat was sent out to the wilderness to bear all the sins of the community, where it would perish in the nothingness and the, the mystery and the darkness that the desert provided. And this is where the Spirit sends Jesus. Why? Well, there are a couple of important reasons, I think. One of those reasons is that there are some things we can only learn in a desert. Jesus could not become his true self if all he was doing was hanging around people telling him how great he was all the time. That, that wasn't going to turn him into the creature that God intended. So there are some things we can only learn in the desert. Another reason that this is important is that uh, it's reminiscent of the line by C.S. Lewis. 
when he says, God will spare us no amount of suffering to turn us into the creatures God intends us to be. Because God is the ultimate, the first, and the last economist, God uses everything in our lives to mold us into the creatures that God intends. And our failures, our weaknesses, our pain, our sorrow, things that are inflicted on us or things we inflict on ourselves, those things can be used by God just as ably as any of our victories or accomplishments. God can use it all for grace, and God does. And so in this instance, we see that at work in Jesus, that God is not sparing him his time in the desert because God will spare us nothing in order to to mold us and make us. And so Jesus, who goes willingly into the desert, is tempted with all sorts of things. Display of his power. Display of the Father's power. The chance to be in charge of everybody and everything. And he says, no. No, this isn't who I am. This isn't who God intends for me to be. So while those first two things are so important about this story, they're not the most important things. The most important thing about this story is that Jesus, aided by the Spirit, ministered to by angels, is becoming himself. He is determining who he will be. And what he understands is that that's his job. It's nobody else's job to make Jesus the person that God wants him to be. It's his job. It's a work of self-determination. And that's the hardest work there is in life. Michelangelo was asked, how do you create such beautiful sculptures? He said, well, I, I get the block of marble and I look at it and I cut away everything that isn't the sculpture. That's how genius thinks. But it's also the way we become adults. We spend our lives trying things on and taking them off and chipping them away until the things that aren't us are gone, like those chips of stone on the ground by Michelangelo. And in that process of having them knocked off or taking them off, we emerge as the person that we are at peace with, that we know God is pleased with because, because we are exercising our decision-making powers to determine who we'll be. And we say yes to some things and we say no to some things. One of the hallmarks of all this, of course, is that is the fundamental notion that you and I are created free. We are free creatures. We have free will. We have the ability to choose. And it's the church's job to support each of us as we are, go through that process and choose how we will determine ourself. It's not the church's job to make you less free than God made you. That's why you don't hear sermons about don't sing or don't dance or don't do this or don't do that. You have to decide those things. You, together with this community, the tradition of all the saints before us, and the spirit working in you. Now, because we are free, the only way we can love is by choosing to love. We have to give our consent to that. We're not forced by God or anyone else to become anyone that we don't want to be. This is mirrored, of course, in our sacraments. In marriage, the first thing that happens after we declare what the church believes marriage to be is that the two people being married have to declare their consent to each other. It sounds arcane and like language that we've just kept in there because it's flowery and old and has always been used, but the principle is that you cannot love unless you're free. Because if you're not free, it's not love. It's something else that may be good. It may be obedience. It may be all sorts of other things, but you have to be free first. 
When, when we make Christians at that baptismal font, the whole series of questions in our covenant implies consent all along the way. Do you believe? Do you believe? Will you? Will you? Will you respect the dignity of every human being? You are free. Are you choosing this or having it chosen for you? Yes, we confirm kids when they're 14. Maybe we should do it at a different age. But the reality is kids are making very important choices about their lives at 14. Who they'll hang out with, how they'll spend their time, what they'll put in their body, what they'll do with their bodies. That's already happening at 14. And it's important that there is a body of support so that as teenagers are determining who their true selves are, they have both the, the breadth of movement and the support of those who love them to help them understand what good decisions mean. Good decisions reflect the goodness of God. And those decisions help shape and form the kind of person you become. As I said, you don't always have to make good decisions with God because if you make a poor decision, God will be there to help you learn from that so that the next decision you make will be better. Why is this all so important? The people who founded this country talked about the inalienable right for us to be free people, to choose our own future. And they said it in language that we all learn in school. But here's what they were saying. No person, no parent, no community, no government, no country can tell people who they are. That's our work. And that's why Ukraine is such a tragedy. Because that's what's going on. And it's wrong when people are told that they can't be the gender they choose. It's wrong when people inside of good decisions are told they have to think one way or vote one way. And it's wrong when we kill people in order to make them more like ourselves. Self-determination is at the root of our Christian experience. It's a human right that we are all free and that we get to choose. And in this country, we have worked our way through a couple hundred years plus of trying to figure out what, that, what exactly that looks like. Now, we can all have hearty discussions about the choices we make in that road to self-determination. We will not always agree about those. But we must agree that that path of choosing our own way is at the heart of humanity itself. And that's what Jesus is doing today. He is having to choose the kind of person he's going to become. And he is tempted by shiny things that would tempt him all of us at any moment. He'll finally be tempted, as you know, the night before he dies in the garden, when he hears God say, if you choose me, you will lose your earthly life. And in that moment, all of the decisions he's made all along the way help him to self-determine that loving God with all his heart and all his mind and all his strength and all of his soul means that he needs to do this thing. But even in that moment, he has to decide. God cannot impose it on him. Our freedom is God's immeasurable gift to us. But we all know, whether we're young or whether we're moving in, in a different direction, <laughs> we all know that it comes with a great responsibility, with a great privilege, that we get to filter the things that we allow to come into our hearts and minds so that we can go about the serious work, the joyful work, the everlasting work 
of becoming, with God's help, the creatures that God intended us to become. Together, let us tell the story of God's love for us in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Paula, our bishop-elect, for Chilton, our assisting bishop, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord for this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, for the people of Ukraine, for safety, peace, and strength, for those on our parish prayer list, and those we now name silently are allowed. We lift our prayers for Rod and for Allison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. the victims of gun violence who died in Chicago this past week, and for those who inflicted this violence on our sisters and brothers. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed we now name silently are allowed. Let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. Lord the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be 
be seated. So I haven't really gotten to say this for two years. After church, we hope you'll go through the glass doors and up the steps and join us for coffee in the McLean room. And if you're, yes, exactly. And if you're feeling especially intrepid, uh, you can stand on the patio and drink your coffee today too. And I bring that up because the, the patio and the view from that patio is going to change with your help in the coming months. And to talk about that, Patty Lee is going to share with us something that has been brewing for about a year and which we are about to uh, uh, work on together. Hi, good morning. I'm Patty Lee. I have some super, super, super exciting news. Um, our uh, youth committee, our formation, um, has been working on the children's playground this past year. Um, we've jumped all the hoops uh, for the village and getting permits. And um, on Friday, April 8th, and Saturday, April 9th, we are going to be doing a community build for our Christchurch playground. Uh, so we're super excited. And the reason why I'm up here today is first to make the announcement um, about this exciting news, but also um, request your help. It's a community build. Uh, we need about 15 to 20 volunteers to help us build the playground up um, off the patio. And it'll be really fun. Uh, we'll have some coffee and donuts in the morning. And we do have a foreman from Landscape Structures who's going to guide us um, through the build. So don't be too freaked out, because I was at first. I'm like, what? <laughs> We're building a playground? Um, but it's been done all through the North Shore. So rest assured, um, we've got some good guidance uh, that's going to help us build. Um, and we'll have some lunch, and uh, we need about 15, 20 volunteers to help. Uh, we ask um, for members uh, that are 16 or older to come, but little little kids can help too. Uh, we're we're going to need help with wheelbarrows and putting out mulch um, once the playground is built. So please join us um, on Saturday, April 9th. There are some sign-up sheets up here on the table in the front, and everybody's welcome for sure to have a good time. But um, we do need some able bodies to be able to work the wrenches and the ratchets. Um, so please join us. It'll be very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. And this, uh, this playground at a later date, once we built it, will be dedicated to memory of Joe and Buffy Urban's late son. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Holy One, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, holy God, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom in love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Holy God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, Jesus gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Christ who died and rose for us, you sent your Holy Spirit, your own first gift for those who believe, to complete your work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Jesus to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Almighty God, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming Christ's resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting Christ's coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord our God. God, our creator, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. 
We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. My friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Together, let us pray our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, the strength to risk something big for something good, and the wisdom to know that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be among you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.